everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to make a DIY Dollar Tree lamp for Halloween. Ooh. You're going to need these skeleton garlands, this vase, ginger jar face type thing, this wire black basket, this jumbo permanent marker in black, the hot glue gun, craft sticks, these are the jumbos, and this set of stickers if you want. It's optional. And then this ranger moss, also optional. We're just going to use one of the skeletons. What the design I came up with is to make a little tiny scared skeleton sitting on a gravestone inside the jar. You guys can do whatever you like, and I mean that 100%. The design that I come up with is not the design that you have to come up with. You want to fill yours with bats. You want to fill yours with candy. You want to do whatever you want to do. It's totally up to you, okay? But if you want to make the scared little skeleton sitting in the jar lamp, stay tuned. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently score the front of his joints, one side of his joints, basically wherever I want his joints to fold away from. So for example, I'm going to have him hugging his knees. So I'm going to score the outside of his elbow and I'm going to have him bending his knees. So I'm going to score the tops or the fronts of his kneecaps. I also wanted to show you that I actually dislocated an arm and um, if you do that, that's totally fine. I'm going to show you that once you have it in place, you can go ahead and glue it back later. So if you're doing this and following along and you cut an arm off, it's totally fine. For some people, it actually might be easier to go ahead and disassemble the limbs. The only place that this skeleton is jointed is his hips. They're actually not attached. They're in like a little ball and socket type of hinge joint. Um, but I just thought it would look so cute. I also did the outsides of his wrists. Like I said, the outsides of his elbows, the outsides of his wrists, sort of like behind where his pinky would be, and his kneecaps. Everything else was fine. And then um, what I've done is I've motioned him once I have the joints all cut. I feel like I was cutting his ligaments, you know. It was kind of kind of strange. But he's a skeleton, so he doesn't have any. And he's fake plastic, so he really doesn't have any. But anyway, um, I've made him, I've manipulated him, to like folded him in so that he would be hugging his knees. And the next the first thing I'm going to do is take the hot glue and I'm going to glue his hands to the front of his shins. Um, and it does take a second or two to hold up. This plastic is uh, very rubbery and thin and it kind of like almost, almost felt like it was melting the plastic a little bit. So be careful if you have high temp glue guns, okay? But um, I'm just going to hold it. And then when I detached him from the cardboard, there was a little tiny white... Um, what is it, like a coated wire? I'm trying to think, like a twist tie, I'm sorry. Um, that was actually holding him to the cardboard. Save that, because we're gonna use that to hold his knees together in a minute, um, so that the glue sets up. So, what I'm doing here is I am holding his knees together, holding his hands onto his front of his shins, as you could see, and just holding it so the glue sets up. This right here is me gluing his elbow back to where I had cut it off, okay? And just to show you here that you just need a tiny bit of patience to get this job done. Okay? And then here is me trying again to hold his knees um, tight. I did have a lot of trouble with his knees because the way his hips are, he wanted to keep, keep his knees spread, which is why I ended up taking the little wire. And we're not going to leave the wire there. We're just going to leave it there while the glue has plenty of time to set up. And you don't notice the hot glue. Like if you put a big glob of hot glue between his knees, you don't notice it. Even if, you know, it's, even if you examine the jar really close, you cannot tell that he's got a big glob of glue between his knees. All right. And we're just going to set him off to the side. Once I um, glued his knees together, I realized what would help him sit up is if I actually glued his thighs to the bottom rib. I know that that sounds like, all of this sounds so terrible, doesn't it? Like, <laughs> like we're manipulating a human being, but... Um, what I did was I glued his front of his thigh to his bottom rib and it kept his legs t pulled in really tight. I just thought he looked like he had a scared face on, but not a scary face. He looked like he was scared and that's what um, inspired me to make it look like he was scared huddled inside next to the gravestone. Okay, so I'm just letting that, I'm holding that um, in place. Like I said, I've just glued where his thighs touch his ribs and you could see as it actually crossed his feet in the in the interim of doing that which actually makes it so much cuter because now he really looks scared 
Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the jumbo popsicle sticks and this is just an option. You can use anything else you want. Honestly, this is just, I've got these gravestone stickers and I wanted to make the gravestone a little taller than the skeleton. So it sticks up behind the skeleton. And, uh, but if you guys want to make a gravestone out of foam board or cardboard, or you could just skip the popsicle sticks altogether, any of that stuff's great. But if you can see here, I've got these gravestone stickers that I already had from, from the Dollar Tree and they're purple and, um, purple isn't like a huge, like huge big deal. Cause I'm actually going to color it with black marker to make it look black and aged. And I'm using the purple in the center to kind of make it look a little like it takes on a gray to tone hue, I was going to say, but you can see here, I've just on the front, I'm going around the edges. Um, with the black marker. This is the fat um, jumbo sharpie, the fake knockoff from the Dollar Tree. Um, I know the picture in the beginning shows red, but only the picture online was only in red. And I don't have the package anymore, so I wanted to show it to you guys in a package, but it's made by Jot. Um, and it's starting to wear, which I told you guys with, in one of the previous videos that I like to keep my old markers as they get old because it's great for shading. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a different permanent black marker and make this really dark. But you can see I've used this for shading in the front and I've made it look a little bit like an aged, um, you know, gravestone by just like shading around the outside. Okay. And I've also, um, like I glued a sticker to the front and the back. I never told you guys that. I'm sorry. So I also um, colored around the edges so that you could, wouldn't see the purple edges. All right. And here's the other marker I've taken. I'm going to color in the black stick um, so it kind of fades off into the background. We don't want to have a blaring stick at us. All right, so here what I'm doing is I've just taken a random piece of cardboard packaging. This was actually packaging from another project and I've traced a um, circle of the bottom of the jar because um, what I'm going to do is I'm making a little base for him to sit on and I'm going to drop him, glue him to the base and drop him straight down the jar. So um, what I've done is I've drawn, I've drawn, <laughs> sorry guys, I've traced the outside of the jar and then I've cut the circle just a tiny bit smaller because so he could sit down into the jar. And what I'm going to do, and it's important that I suggest you guys do it too, is fit it in there before you even color it, before you're even done cutting it. Um, drop it down in your jar and make sure it fits, which I did and mine does. Um, so then... The next thing we're going to do is we're going to color it black and you can skip this step since we're going to color it, cover it with Span um, not Spanish moss, but reindeer moss. But I, I just didn't think I, I didn't want to have a chance of even the tiniest bit of white coming out. So I just went ahead and colored it with my marker. All right. And now I'm going to just make sure that I have him, that the stick is high enough and I don't have to cut off any extra. And then I realized there's still going to be more stick that you're going to see on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and color that in. And I tested my circle. And now I'm going to color it in. I'm going to use that other marker because it's, it's much better. It's this marker is starting to really fade. So, um, this one was actually a dollar 50 from five below, but it's just because I got it because I was there and, it, and it's two ended. So it's nothing like they, they just get a new marker from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> They have other permanent markers too. Um, and now I'm going to put a bunch of glue on the bottom of his butt and his feet. And I've positioned him just in the center. I mean, centered throughout the thing because the gravestone behind him is very thin. So I wasn't worried about like leaving room for it. You just don't want to push him all the way to the back of the circle. And like I said, I've decided to take this marker and to darken the rest of the stick and to darken up the gravestone again because the first um, lighter color is just too light for me. It's just, I really liked it better, much darker. And this is like, makes it practically like a black gravestone, which makes it really cool because he is a uh, very light in color. He's a, you know, very neutral colored uh, skeleton. Then the black gravestone with a touch of purple pops really behind his head. And I just wrote RIP on it, rest in peace. So, and then I just take a wad of hot glue and just stand it up behind him so he looks like he's kind of leaning against it. Now I'm, I have a memory lamp tutorial. I'm going to link in the description box down below. 
um, where it gives more in depth of how to make the lampshade and um, other parts of it or whatever. And also, if you haven't seen that yet, but one of my friends who's also a subscriber said, oh, she's going to make a Halloween one. And I was like, that's a great idea. I'm going to steal your idea. And I told her, hi, Donna. <laughs> um, so I'm stealing Donna's idea to make this one. And this, Donna, you're my inspiration because we love all things Halloween, Donna and I. So. so now I'm just taking hot glue around the base. Oh, not yet. I'm going to undo his wire. So the wire did get a little glued to his leg, but you see, I just hold his legs while I pull the wire out and it just was, came right out. So, so now I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm going to put some of the moss around the base. Nothing spectacular, just so it looks like he's in a, in a cemetery, you know, it would be grass. And I like this, I like the reindeer moss because it's finer in, in grain than the Spanish moss. The Spanish moss color would be great for an old cemetery. But the reality of grass is better for the, um, for the reindeer moss is better for like the reality of grass. So, um, I just thought that that was fine. It's still kind of a neutral greens are neutrals, you know, the farmhouse look is neutral. So that's why I'm trying to do like a little less color. Um, I can't wait to share my Halloween decor with you guys when it comes, but I haven't even shared my fall decor with you yet. So, <laughs> so, uh, be patient. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the jar. And I've taken the label off the bottom and I'm just sticking him right down in there. I just think he's so stinking cute. I can't take it. So now I'm going to work on the lampshade. Like I said, I'm going to link the tutorial to the memory lamp down there to get a better in-depth um, idea of the video of how to make this lampshade. Um, but I'm basically just going to take the handle, bend it into our hearth, a harp, excuse me, the harp clip is going to hold it inside the lampshade and a piece of foam board or cardboard or whatever scrap materials you have is what's going to steady it. Um, so here I've just taken, you take a wad of hot glue and I'm not worried about big glue, globs of glue because we're going to make a finial on top. Um, we're going to take this, one of the eyeballs that from the Dollar Tree, any ping pong bowl, any, if you have a a, a cabinet handle if you have anything that you want to stick on the top I was actually contemplating it to take off one of the other skeleton heads and make it in the finial but I like that the lampshade is still just like a lampshade it it's not necessarily has to be a Halloween lampshade it's just a black lampshade right now that I can do stuff to it for other occasions so that's decided just to make a black ball and I didn't have any ping pong balls or else I wouldn't use one of my eyeballs um but I do have lots of eyeballs. <laughs> um, so what I've done is I've um, glued the under, I've glued, I've colored the underside with that black marker and I've glued it to the, where the hearth meets the top of the basket. And then once it's set up, I've just taken my marker and I've colored the top. And I just think, I know it sounds weird. I think it looks like a little classy, <laughs> looks like a classy Dollar Tree lampshade. Um, so that's that. And I, like I said, if you need more in-depth tutorial, I'll link it in the description box for the third time. I'll tell you, but what we're doing now is we're creating the circle. That's going to hold the tea light candle. Um, that's also different in this tutorial. It's a tea light candle, not a lamp, um, which I'll show you in the other one. You'll see, but what I'm doing is I've taken a glass or I've taken some round object and I've fitted it to see if it doesn't go all the way down the jar okay I want to let you guys know that these are not all the same this is a different jar than I used in the memory lamp and the light that goes the piece of foam board that stopped up the memory lamp went straight through this one so I'm creating a whole new circle I've measured it the way I've done it is I've taken one of my drinking glasses I have a bunch of different ones and I saw one that actually stopped where the neck of the vase goes in and I realized that that's the size that I need and then I traced it cut it out of foam board and then I've cut a quarter inch wide by about a uh, it's a quarter inch wide by about three quarters of no that's not right it's about a quarter inch wide by a half an inch deep notches across from each other on um, on this board and I've just hand drawn them but you can use a ruler because what's going to happen is those two little Harp clips are going to go in to the car into the foam board 
Um, as you can see here, I'm dry fitting it and you want to always test it before you cut anymore or color it. You want to make sure that it works for you. Okay. And like I said, that round piece of, of memory foam board right there is just going to give the lampshade some stability and balance. You put the clips in, you put that down and you can see it holds it in nicely. It looks like it fits. So we're going to go ahead and color it in. I'm just taking that same black permanent marker and just go to town. I love scribbling. Don't you love scribbling? It's like getting all your anxieties out. But I just thought it was very important to, to color the edges of this. You could have, I could have left this white. Um, I'll be honest with you. If I look across at it sitting on my fireplace right now, I can't even see it. Um, it does look like a black line going through the top of the lampshade, but it actually looks like it's part of the lamp. But I just meant like you can't really notice. If I would have left it white, probably would have blended into my fireplace. But, um... But I've colored all of the edges just because it's a black lampshade. It can go with the black lampshade. Now, some of the other options you could do for this lamp, you could spray paint this jar. Um, I love the spider webbing. I was actually going to do the spider webbing, but I wanted to make the jar something that I can change out. Um, you know, the little creature inside. I can change him out for different projects. But you can permanently alter this jar. I just was trying not to. I was just trying to go for a little bit more of a classy look. <laughs> but then what I just did is I rested one of these battery operated tea lights on top of the black piece of board and that's it so if you I hope you really like this video if you do give it a thumbs up if you have any questions leave them in the comments down below don't forget to share with friends and family anybody you know who'd be interested in possibly making one of these ooh creepy <laughs> And if you haven't yet, click subscribe and join the family. And don't forget to check out the other memory lamp video for a more in-depth tutorial on how to make the lampshade. And as always, you guys take care. God bless. See you next time. Bye.